Hello and welcome to my basic Zelkov guide. In this guide, I'm going to be going over Zelkov's bases, good classes for the unit, as well as properties of the unit, pros and cons, level of investment, and so on. So to begin, let's talk about his bases. So he has 65% HP growth, 35% strength growth, 15% magic, 40% dex, 35% speed, 35% defense, 15% res, 25% luck, and 10% build. He also has an innate nine build. So he has pretty high build on Thief, which is actually surprising. Now compared to Yunaka, who only has five build on Thief, he has the ability to wield heavier weapons without penalty and pretty much the best daggers in the game tend to have a little bit over five weight, around like six, maybe seven weight when upgraded. And if you wanna run specific things on them as well, it'll be a little bit more weight, potentially. Zelkov's passive is not quite. It allows him to be a little bit more dodgy than normal. Any enemy that attacks him has 10 less hits, which also stacks with any avoid bonuses. So this allows him to be the more evasive of the two starting thieves. Uh, Yunaka is definitely better on crit builds and Zelkov is a little bit better at passive dodging. So what are some pros and cons of the unit? Uh, so he's a thief and he does come in with good bases. He has decent starting speed. This is him at his base. This is actually a completed playthrough, so I can't really show running him, uh, but he is a pretty solid thief that will deal good damage and be relevant throughout an entire run. Now, if you feed him kills, he will level up. He will typically double. Uh, his speed growth could be a little bit better, but it's not the worst. It is 50%, so he will still want to get like speed plus three, potentially speed taker. Now that the well has been added into the game, if you can get SP books from the well, <laughs> you could probably get speed taker earlier now, so this changes everything. Uh, but he, he probably wants speed plus three to speed plus four long term and speed taker for sure. He could also run avoid, but pros and cons. Uh, early middle game availability, that's I guess that's a con, but not really. It's it's reasonable. He's he's totally viable as soon as you get him. So like for a pro, uh, easy to run, very low investment required to get him up and running. He comes in at level 17 with a thousand SP with great bases and high build. So he can immediately use you know you can upgrade his steel dagger into a silver dagger and he can use that immediately with no penalty so that's pretty huge upside and the only real downside is if you don't want to run a thief i don't really see i mean he's a, he's a solid damage unit who can avoid tank very consistently so even if you don't want him killing things he can at the very least avoid tank and stall enemies out which is still really useful, and he doesn't necessarily need Corrin like he has here. He can just sit in a tree or a pillar, and he'll be able to dodge tank. So you can run him as a bruiser dodge tank. You can run him as a damage unit, and he's very low investment. So I'd say there's very few cons, if any. He's just a solid unit. Uh, level investment, pretty much zero. Um, it's it's a, at the worst, it's low. You don't have to reclass him. You can actually just leave him on Thief. But if you want to reclass him it's still low investment. You just upgrade his daggers as you, you upgrade his weapons as you would any unit, uh, maybe engrave them depending on what engravings you have access to. Now he can't really get damage engrave right away unless you preemptively put like Sigurd engrave or beginnings on, or even Leafs engraving on iron daggers that you can then upgrade into steel that you can then upgrade into silver. So that's one way to get him good daggers without losing you know all the engravings until like chapter 17 when you get leaf and sigurd back which both of which increase damage and accuracy which helps um so level investment definitely low so let's talk about classes now so you can leave him on thief and he'll be totally fine generally you probably want him to have access to daggers because he does have an affinity for daggers now with his bases he actually, I actually don't recommend putting him on Wyvern. It's kind of become a meme on the channel where like most things are good on Wyvern, but if something's speed isn't high enough, like if you don't have at least 50% speed growth, you're not gonna be a good Wyvern because you'll never double things. So I, would, I wouldn't put him on Halberdier. You could run him on Hero, it wouldn't be bad. There's definitely better things for him. Swordmaster, 
Could be something you run on him. You would be going for crits. Um, I don't know that his strength is high enough for Swordmaster. I feel like he'd basically just be a bad Kigetsu. Uh, so I would avoid that. Warrior can be an okay option. Warrior is kind of like the default option for when you don't know what you want to put a physical unit on. And you just want to be able to shoot down birds and also contribute with axes. But Warrior would be kind of bypassing any of his noticeable advantages. But it does fix some of his growth. So Warrior puts him at 55% strength and 50% speed, which is decent. And when combined with his 10% build growth, isn't bad. And Warrior also gives plus 5% more. So he could be on Warrior if you want. Sniper. Sniper is something I usually recommend against. You could run a crit build on it. Um, I don't think... He does a 40% dex growth, which is pretty decent. And Sniper also increases dex by 30%. And he also would gain 15% strength on Sniper. So he'd be at 50% strength, 70% dex growth. So if you wanted to run like a crit Sniper build, you could run that on him and it'd be fine. Combined with the no distractions, he could reasonably be a decent crit Sniper. Bow Knight, I would skip. I wouldn't put him on armor. Paladin is something he could go on. Paladin does give you strength and speed. It gives you 15% of both. So he would be at 50% strength and speed. So he'd be able to semi-reliably double on lances or swords, I would say. Probably lances would be the best option if you want to put him on Paladin. He does get 12 build on Paladin, which would allow him to wield Silver Lance pretty reliably. Wolf Knight. This can be decent on him. It also increases his build. So like a Lance Wolf Knight would allow him to use Rider's Bane and would give him access to Steel and Silver Lance, which are just decent weapons. Now the strength growth on Wolf Knight is only 5%, putting him at 40% strength growth, which is acceptable. It's not the best, but it's not terrible. Wolf Knight does give plus 15% dex and 20% speed. So you're looking at 55% dex growth and 55% speed growth. So Wolf Knight would be a decent option for him. It also increases his strength by a single point, which is kind of nice. Helps boost his damage up just slightly. Uh, but in terms of speed, Thief has 5% less speed, but 5% more strength growth. And Wolf Knight is, you know, just the faster of the two. And Thief also gives 20% dex, so that's a consideration. But Wolf Knight is definitely probably the main class you would put him on outside of Thief. Otherwise, probably just leave him on Thief. Now for something like Griffin Knight, you're throwing out daggers again. So Griffin Knight wouldn't be bad for him. 10% more strength growth on Griffin Knight, plus the 20% speed puts him at 55% speed growth, and then 45% strength. He could run like lances, and he would be decent at this. The base 10 build would increase as he levels up every 10 times on fixed mode. He would get one point of build per 10 level up. So if he levels up 20 to 30 times on Griffin Knight, you're looking at 12 to 13 build, which is reliable, you know, weight reduction on Silver Lance. So he could be a decent Griffin Knight. It also gives him staff utility, six move, and better bases. Uh, so I'd say Griffin Knight and Wolf Knight are the main things aside from Thief. Uh, potentially crit builds uh, like Sniper, actually. I'm not, it's debatable as to how good Sniper is. Magic classes, I would skip. He only has 15% magic growth. There's really no advantage to running these. And then for things like Martial Master and, you know, High Priest, I would skip those as well. I don't see the advantage. He doesn't, he doesn't have high enough magic to justify running this. Uh, another thing to note about him, even though he is a dodge tank, he can be quite weak. So like right now to uh, magic, he has very low res, surprisingly. He almost has as low of res as like a tank. Now, as he levels up, he only has 20% res growth. So he actually has a res problem. Now, if you put Corrin on him, as you increase the bond rank, it does increase res a little bit, which helps. And it also increases health. It increases magic, but doesn't, which doesn't help him at all. But the res and the health makes him more tanky. The other thing with enemy mages is Mystical ignores terrain bonuses for a void, so he tends to have magic problems. Now, if you want to fix these magic problems, you can use talismans on him or just keep him away from mages like you would a tank. Luckily, though, he won't get doubled. He's usually fast enough to not get doubled by enemy mages, so you can avoid 
him getting one rounded by most mages. And as long as you get his res up a little bit, it'll kind of help. But you can see that, you know, 20% res growth on Thief and a starting res of five will not scale well into endgame. So as long as he's kept away from thieves, or I'm sorry, mages, he'll be fine. Okay, so good early passives. So I would say avoid passives are good. Um, so let's go to the thing. There may be, I might accidentally show spoilers. <laughs> this, is a, this is a completed run. We'll try to avoid it. It's just a character you unlock. I feel, I feel like by this point people should know it, but there's still some people who haven't unlocked it. All right, so ignore. So skip ahead like five seconds just in case. There we go. All right, I think I was fast enough. <laughs> I think I was fast enough. All right, early game passives. So he can't get Marth because of time skip. Or time skip, that's a completely wrong game. Because of losing your emblem rings, which is this version's, this game's version of time skip. So he loses out on Marth, Celica, Sigurd, uh, Leaf, Roy, until you acquire them again. So when he starts, you can get Lin. So I would say getting speed plus three is probably the best thing for him to increase his odds of doubling. It also increases his avoid uh, speed scales avoid, so that helps him dodge. Uh, another thing you could get on him, uh, gentility wouldn't be horrible, but it's very expensive. I'd probably skip that. Uh, all the stuff on Erica is super situational. Uh, anything on Ike, the only thing he would want is Wrath, so you could save up for Wrath if you want to run a crit build, but you'd have to keep his health low to increase his crit rate. Uh, Micaiah you get later on. Uh, Lucina you get early on. Dex actually would help him on a crit build, so it scales your crit and your accuracy. I don't think he usually has ac accuracy issues, but this could be nice. And then Corrin. So you could get Draconic Hex if you want to. This would allow him to attack and debuff if he's not able to kill. You could also get health if you want him to be tanking more. It's actually quite cheap to get HP plus 7, and HP plus 10 is 1k. So if you have trouble with dealing with, you know, high damage mages, this could help. Uh, but you generally want to get a void. Unfortunately, the avoid stuff from Marth, which is just like straight up avoid, you don't get until super late game for him. So that is one advantage that Yunaka has over him. Uh, Perceptive is also really good on Yunaka, but he can't get access to it for a while. One thing he can get access to by chapter, the end of chapter uh, 17 is knife precision, which just allows you to hit and avoid, like it, it increases your hit and avoid. And it's actually quite cheap. So if you get, if you're able to do Leaf's Paralog as soon as you get him, like as soon as you get him back, you could easily get to 17 bond rank, bond level with him. And then for 1k, you get hit avoid plus 10 on knives, which is pretty crazy and is definitely one of the better things because it like the hit isn't really why you want it. You want the avoid and combined with his passive, that's just like passive 20 avoid on enemy phase, which does help deal with those enemy mages. And if you also increase his speed, that also increases his avoid. So I'd say Lin speed increase is probably his best thing. Uh, you could try to run something like strength on Roy to increase his damage. This would be good because 1k for plus 2 damage. If you're doubling, it's plus 4 damage. That's not bad. But it's like Roy's availability. I think it's after chapter 19 or 20. I think it's after chapter 19 you get Roy back. So it's pretty late in, late in. So you're talking like 8 chapters plus a few paralogs, maybe 9 chapters before you get Roy back. So I would definitely go for the speed. I, I would say immediately unlock speed on him. And then as you get Leaf back, you can determine if you want the avoid from knife precision or if you want the strength damage. Now you can always hold on to his SP if you want to get something like Speed Taker. Obviously that's more of an investment to unlock. Speed Taker is a good option for him because increasing speed also increases avoid. So he just needs to get five kills and then he'll be plus 20 avoid from Speed Taker triggering. And after you get Speed Taker, you can also get speed plus three relatively quickly. So one thing you might want to do is after chapter 14, when you get Byleth, get Mentorship to increase your XP gain. This is 250 SP, but it levels you up faster, which therefore increases the rate at which you gain SP 20% faster. So getting this early is fantastic, plus speed, plus three. And then eventually, if you want to save up for Speed Taker, or if you just want to get Mentorship and then save up for Speed Taker, I would say those are all viable. Uh, but definitely drop a comment as to how you run him and what passives you use. Um, I think that's 
it for this one, aside from emblem rings. Uh, emblem rings, really, it's just Corrin. We'll just wrap up with this. Really, he just wants to run Corrin for the extra health, for the res, but mostly for the smoke because he is a covert. So if he's running, oh yeah, also if he's running Corrin, he has Draconic Hacks. So when he attacks, he debuffs, which is very nice. Uh, and when he pops Corrin and he attacks, it can AOE debuff. It can AOE freeze things, which also helps with his kit. But create a void, fog, or create fog that increases the void. So this is his main thing. And if you can set it up so you have a bunch of coverts in this and you body block enemies so that they can't enter the fog, you can have the benefits of the fog and they can't take advantage of it. So there's, there's very simple positioning tactics you can use uh, in combination with your units or just with, you know, map terrain. So for example, if he's on like a one tile bridge and he uses this, enemies can't really get in too well. Uh, but yeah, it's definitely pretty powerful. Everyone knows it, I think. The quality time, that's not really, like that's something nice. The pair up also helps. Getting pair up, you need to do her pair log, Corrin's pair log to get it. But that's it for this one. Definitely like and subscribe. Drop a comment, let me know what you think about Zelkov, how you run him, and I'll see you next time.